Squirrel. What's up, gang? Welcome back. Today we are cruising in Denton, Texas traffic on the way to Guggen HQ. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe and notifications because I always tell y'all to do that at the end of the video and it probably makes less sense to do that. Anyways, we're going to do a tackle haul today, man. I'm going to go pick up a bunch of Guggen baits. I might get some line. I might get this, that, and the other. I don't know. I'm going to the warehouse. I'm going to see what they got. I'm going to grab me a bunch of goodies. We're going to go home. We're going to talk about it. But then, this is the important part. I'm going to show y'all every single item, every little bit of tackle I own. And over the last few years, man, making these videos, I've accumulated probably a couple thousand dollars in tackle. I mean, I just, it's its all over the garage. I got backpacks full. I got tackle boxes full. I got stuff probably in every car. I think there's a, there's a lunker log down there on like a five aught hook. And anyways, yeah, we're going to show you every little bit of tackle. I'm also going to cover maybe one key point about each piece and how I might fish it. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how this camera's moving every two seconds. So I'm gonna tell you one key point about each bait, maybe how I would fish it, where I would fish it, why I would do that, and it's not gonna make this video hopefully two to three hours long, so let's go ahead and get into it. HQ, grab the goodies, back home, tell you about everything we have, man. We're gonna just completely destroy the garage today. Let's go. Woo, place is looking busy. All right, it's the weekend. All the toys. Holy cow. This place is filling up, dudes. I don't remember seeing all this stuff here. There's like 10 boats. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, there's ten boats and like twenty kayaks. The place is absolutely packed. The Guggen Tune's looking better than ever. Rob's boat's just chilling. Somebody's new lun. They're all getting new luns, man. It's ridiculous. John's supercharged Lexus. Ooh, turbos. What is this thing? What is it even doing here? Cross slim shakes. I don't think I've ever thrown this color before. And uh, into slim shake. Oh man, we got a bag full of goodies. Even got a little bit of apparel. Let's get back to the house. We're going to talk about what we got and what all else we have. Oh well, that might be new. Oh, he's quick. Got a new mascot over here at the warehouse. He's cruising. All right, y'all, we are back at the house. Let's quickly cover this haul from the Guggen Squad HQ, and then we're gonna get out into the garage. We're gonna literally go through every little bit of tackle. We're gonna bring in all the backpacks, all the boxes, and we're gonna fill you in on what we're throwing on a day-to-day -day basis. We're also gonna cover some tips for beginners when it comes to some of these baits, and we're gonna showcase some higher-end baits that maybe you guys have never even seen. So let's go ahead and get into it. First things first, we grabbed some fishing line. We got a little bit of mono, fluoro, and braid in different strengths. Let me tell you a little bit about it. We got some strong 50 pound braid. For things like frogging, we're gonna make sure our braid reels are spooled up nicely. I think we're running a little bit low just from retying on some of our braid reels. So 50 pound braid. We also got 15 pound fluorocarbon. This is probably what I would recommend if you guys are just wondering what is the, a great all around, all purpose line. The 15 pound fluorocarbon is going to be absolutely fantastic for just about everything, excluding maybe certain top waters where you really need that line to float or to crank out of some thick grass. 15 pound Guggen Squad fluorocarbon is gonna be absolutely fantastic. And then we got some 12 pound monofilament. I just wanted to grab some lighter line we could use as leaders on some of our finesse tactics. I don't like to go too low in the waters we fish because specifically we will get snapped off left and right if we use stuff like eight, 10 pound in the waters we're fishing. Uh, not a lot of it is open water, a lot of it is stumps, trees, things of that nature, so it gets a little sticky. Got some new apparel, man, check this out. Wait till you see this one. Boom, that's right. That's like the largemouth claw variant right there. That thing's absolutely sick. If you guys want to pick up any Guggen Squad gear, any line, any of these baits from Guggen Squad, uh, there's a link down in the description to save 15% on all your Guggen Squad gear. Let's see what we got here. We got some Grande Recons. Ever since we got the boat, we're hitting some deeper waters, some areas uh, of lakes that we wouldn't normally fish, maybe with the kayaks and shallow ponds, of course. So Grande Recons right here, guys. We're gonna be doing some deep diving, maybe along the uh, dams and things of that nature at these big lakes around here. Or just if we see them suspended uh, off of points, we're gonna hit them with the crankbaits. Fall feeding time is coming. We are ready to provide the meals with the Grande Recons. A lot of worms. I just wanted to stock up on some worms because you can't go wrong with Sankos. We got some Mondo worms. Let me tell you a little bit about it. Got some six inch watermelon red flake 
Lunker logs, can't go wrong with a watermelon red flake. Sanko, east coast to west coast, that is gonna absolutely catch fish. Watermelon red flake, very popular color for clear water. Uh, you can even get away with it in some stained water as well. These things are pretty dark right here, so you'd be just fine. Next, we've got some five inch lunker logs. Just if you wanna finesse it down a little bit, throw it on some spinning gear, you can go ahead and drop it down a little. I really like the weight of the six inch for uh, hunking out like weightless Texas rigs on the bait casters. The five inch, I might throw, uh, if the bite is a little bit finicky, maybe I toss this out wacky rig or even Nico rig, things of that nature, just finesse it down. Next, we have got some Slim Shakes, guys, but in a color I've never thrown them, Alabama Crawl, and I absolutely love the Alabama Crawl and the Bandito Bugs, Trench Hogs. I've caught a lot of fish on the other creature-style baits, but never on the, the worms, really, so I had to try those out. And we have got some Dragon Drops. Uh, this is the Green Pumpkin Pearl, just a little flash on the belly. This should absolutely knock out some amazing finesse fishing on the drop shot. And then we got to get back on the Mondo worm train, man. I've been out of Mondo worms and it's still summer. It's heading into fall soon, but guess what? I'm ready to feed these bass some big worms. So we have got green pumpkin, blue fleck. We got some naturals. In fact, I grabbed a couple packs of those and I got some red bug. Now, let us take you to the garage and see what else we can't get into. If you guys are new to the channel and haven't seen the Dream Kayak trailer, check this thing out. We got the Bonafide up top, both Old Towns below, and we got the eight rod and reel combo Yakima topwater carrier for tons of rod and reel storage on the way to the spots with the yaks, guys. Oh boy, this is gonna take a while. Look at this, do y'all remember how nice it looked just a little while ago? What the heck? Okay, wow, I absolutely spared you guys a lot of time for me getting all this stuff out of the garage. <laughs> Woo, what I discovered is I have more tackle than I thought. This is, might take a minute, y'all, but there's gonna be plenty of tips, so stick around for the whole deal. Also, I did not bring in any of our baits for trout. I didn't bring in any of our baits for striper or smallmouth. We can hold that for another video. Also, terminal tackle, I'm gonna cut out of this one and just go with the baits. I showed you guys the haul with some line that we got from the warehouse, but today is just gonna cover all the baits, and then we can talk about terminal tackle if you guys requested enough in the comments section. If you guys wanna see hooks, line, weights, things of that nature, we can go more in depth on that subject. Let's go ahead and open up all these boxes, bags, and everything in between. All right, guys, we are going in no specific order. Let's just kick things off with some Rattlin Neds. The smelt color has actually been one of my favorites, and I will rig this up on just a little Ned head and toss these things out. It's primarily been a winter bait for me, which is why you haven't seen much of it lately. And also I've been preferring drop shots and just a couple of the finesse rigs for the last few months, so you haven't been seeing the Rattlin Neds a lot. We've got some cinnamon lunker logs. I'm just kind of covering a little bit of the worms here. This is, uh, our bag was looking pretty low. You don't see me throw the cinnamon a lot. I, I really like the watermelon red flake. This is John B's favorite color, but uh, that is exactly why we had to stock up and get more worms recently. We have some seven and a quarter inch Mondo worms, guys. This is the smaller size Mondo worm. Check that out and a black and blue flake. Typically I'd go with the green colors in the clear water and then you break out the black and blues with that darker silhouette in the stained water where you really don't have much visibility and cannot see to the bottom. Here's a good example. This is a green pumpkin blue. So this guy right here I'll throw in the clearer water. I have also another five inch set of green pumpkin. So perfect for clear water and finessing it down a little bit. And we have some more dragon drops. These are murky minnow. I have only thrown these a few times. I really prefer the uh, green pumpkin pearl or the sunset bug, natural, or just standard watermelon red flake. But I have some of these left, so we gotta talk about them. We have some black flash Ned rigs. Now these things have been pretty epic. Whenever I go fish for, uh, I've gone for smallmouth a couple times and I've thrown these guys right here. Also, if that's just not the best clarity, but I'm trying to throw a Ned rig out in the winter time, maybe I'll throw this guy right here. Uh, anytime I'm gonna throw a Ned rig, this color has actually stood out and works quite well. That Ned rig is when you really wanna finesse down, try and get more bites. Maybe not go for the biggest fish in the pond. You will catch some big fish on the Ned rigs. I've caught four pounders on this. Uh, that's probably been my top end. But uh, yeah, the Ned rig is when you wanna finesse down and get more bites. I guess next let's do, uh, we got like the chatterbait and jig box, swim jigs here. So we have swim jigs of probably various sizes and colors. This is a quarter ounce white Guggen Squad swim jig. This is the Grass Hero. You can see it doesn't have a trailer on it, unlike this guy right here. You guys can see a slight size difference from the quarter ounce to the three eighths. This gets down in there a little bit faster and I like working it through the thick grass so that heavier weight I usually do prefer. Typically I'm fishing these on straight braid. So here's one that's more color match for you guys. This is a, a gill 
pattern with a uh, more natural saucy swimmer. 3.3 inch, by the way, the 3.3 inch saucy swimmers go so well with the Grass Hero swim jigs, and these things just cut through that thick grass. They work so well when you're trying to get through some hydrilla, things of that nature. Next, we've got some casting jigs. This is just a standard juicy jig. So here we have a gridiron, a little bit larger head. This is a half ounce when I'm fishing some deeper water and I may even have a heavier one than that. So with these standard casting jigs, the idea is to just get down on the bottom, let that head sit like this and have those tail feathers fluttering in the water and then those bass just come in for the kill. You can really imitate a lot of different uh, species that the bass are eating in your local waters by what trailer you put on it. You can see I've ripped off a little head of the bandito bug and I have paired that up to this guy right here. Crack and craws work fantastic as well. You can imitate bluegill based on the color. You can imitate craws based on the color and trailer that you put on these things. So I've got plenty of jigs. This right here is a trash master jig. This one right here is slightly different. This is a trash master jig meant for getting down into some thick stuff. It's actually, you rig it a little bit different. Here's an example of a trash master unrigged. You can see I've got that screw lock and you swivel on your plastic right there and then you put that hook right into your plastic. Now we're getting into some more bluegill colors. Check these out. These actually might be the little, little juicy, the little finesse jigs, guys. Quarter ounce when you need to size down but still wanna throw that jig and have that skirt. Here's an example of a gridiron jig when we're fishing that deeper water. You don't necessarily need these gridirons for ponds, guys. This is a three quarter ounce, so I might throw this when I'm getting into some serious depth and I need to get this jig down to the bottom onto the rock or structure that I am fishing 15 feet, 10 feet, 20 feet, things of that nature. Getting down there quick with this guy right here. Check out these little juicies right here. Got some little baby crawls, baby cracking crawls on the back. This is my setup of choice whenever I'm rocking these little juicies. I like those baby crawls that came out with the shorter versions of the crack and crawls. They work perfect as a trailer on this jig right here. That thing will get munched. Just got different color and size options in the box here. Also, I've got this tube in here I was throwing for smallmouth whenever I was up north with Lunkers TV. This guy right here has done some damage and pulled in some large smallies. Here we've got a couple more jig examples, guys. This is a larger gridiron with a peanut butter and jelly type of pattern. This is one of the 10,000 fish saw craws. It really goes perfect to try and finish out that peanut butter and jelly look. Get some big fish to bite on that larger jig. Then we've got a trash master in more of a natural color with a natural bandito bug trailer. Now we are over to the right side of the box and we can talk about bladed jigs, chatterbaits, guys. Here is a standard original Z-Man chatterbait with a 3.3 inch saucy swimmer on the back and all white. I am definitely throwing this in the chocolate milk and it will get the attention of those fish in the water where you can barely see. It has that blade that's constantly disturbing the water, causing a lot of vibration and they can see this much easier. I'm telling you what, this is going to get those hits with that kick and tail as well. Chatterbaits were one of my very very early on confidence baits guys you've absolutely got to try them out if you have not fished a chatterbait this is one we recently ordered a jackhammer they're a little bit pricier but let me show you this all right guys here you go if you've been wondering why the jackhammers cost so much let's just give you a quick rundown uh, now first things first Oftentimes the blades are color matched, so they've got like a custom paint on there and a flat finish. Uh, this one is almost like a, a, a watermelon color to match that skirt, which the skirt is hand tied on these ones. On this guy, it's almost like glued on there and it really likes to fall apart. You can really tell the difference right off the bat just in the skirt. Now, aside from the skirt, you can see the eye detail on the heads there. So you've got eyes on that jackhammer and nothing to provide further detail on the original. You've got a stronger clip there up front to tie onto and it gets that blade fluttering right away. This is probably the most important part. My biggest key feature on the uh, jackhammers versus the originals. You can see you have a double bait keeper on this guy here on that jackhammer. It really keeps your plastics on there, whereas this one on my left, the original, just has that big one solid piece sticking out of one side to keep your plastics on. Sometimes it just ends up messing up your plastics and they slide off of there real easy when you get hits. This guy right here really makes all the difference with the double bait keeper. And it's also got a little indention right there at the top just to snug that nose up to it. So the jackhammers overall are a much better chatter bait, but they do cost, what, four or five, times as much so I've just uh, gotten a few and collected them throughout my uh, journey fishing look at how bad the skirt looks on that original though I mean it's you know that's why it sells for a couple bucks you guys now I remember seeing a video by flair early on and he talked about black and blue chatter baits and how they were his confidence uh, inspiring color of choice and so I pretty much rocked black and blues for the longest time this is a custom one a friend had given me and uh, it's got just a, a, an unmatched swim bait trailer I forget the name of this one right here but this guy with that rounded head 
is actually meant to go a little bit lower and be fished over rock. So some areas where you might fish, let's say a crankbait, you might actually try this style chatterbait right here. There's another version of that rounded head, which again, I believe was made for fishing rock. I haven't used these too much, but I have a couple in the tackle box, so I guess I should be breaking these out. Let me know if you want to see these in some videos. I've also got some of these Weston swim baits that I received in a mystery tackle box. The thing is pretty clean, really like a natural baby bass color right here. I need to be throwing this more often, at least get a couple catches for you guys. This guy right here, we received in a mystery tackle box as well. Very interesting swivel head and it's like a rear swing loader, so you almost Texas rig the bait as opposed to just sliding it up on the hook. See there, you've got that little notch to where you can almost T-rig your plastics. It's just a different style chatter bait, really gets that bait flowing any which direction. You could probably pop this one off the bottom and have some really good success. We just uh, gave a consistent reel like a standard chatter bait when we used it and we caught some fish on it. And that does it for this box with a couple of the same baits, except for this one last chatterbait that we have rigged up with a saw cross. So you guys see you can really do just about anything that you want with these soft plastic trailers on your chatterbaits. And again, true to almost everything else I'm throwing, I would throw something like this natural greenish color in those clearer waters, and then I would get away with those black and blues or the white in the very stained water. Oh, next let's take you guys through some big baits. I think you guys are gonna enjoy this. Some of the larger swim baits we've been throwing. Glide baits, uh, yeah. We have so many more baits to go through. I'm just gonna give you a brief rundown of each, guys. This is a 13 Fishing Glidesdale Goldilocks color, and believe me, I'm not gonna remember all the information on every one of the baits in this box, let alone the rest of this stuff. But this thing is a sick glide bait that I threw one time. I really made it for a challenge video. I was thinking what kind of fish is gonna eat this, and I only got one bite. It was, a, I think, just a smaller bass that kind of blew up on the tail and I didn't connect. So we're gonna have to try and get a fish on this in future videos, so be looking out. So I'm gonna save that one for last, actually. We have got a Molex. I forget the specific name of this guy right here. It is a glide bait 178 SS, which I believe is slow sink. And as far as the color goes, the pattern looks a lot like the bait fish we'll see in our waters, although it is quite large. So I'm throwing this early in the morning, looking for those big fish that are coming up shallow to feed, uh, maybe right at sunset and just trying to chunk this along the bank. I cannot wait to catch some fish on it. Literally, it's one of the newest glide baits to the tackle box. Now I haven't thrown these in a while, but we have got some Jackal Ganterelle Juniors and a full-size Jackal Ganterelle right here. These were some of the bigger hard body swim baits I had started to throw when I first got into it. These 1.5 ounce Gantrail Juniors are just so perfect. And we've caught five, six pounders on these guys right here. And I mean, those bass just inhale this thing. The hits are so hard, we're just slow creeping it. And then boom, you get a monster bass on these Jackal Gantarels. I think I started off with this color here, and then I ended up uh, really enjoying this guy. In the springtime, this color just absolutely crushed. I think this is Ghost Gill, and that has gotta be my top pick in the Jackal Gantarel Junior such good action you just creep it slow it's got the 360 degree swiveling treble hooks so they don't have as much leverage when they're trying to shake this thing it's just a fantastic bait and that's why we've got it in so many colors i've got another dark one here we also have the solid black color and i seem to have misplaced it it's got to be out in the garage somewhere so i guess this isn't every single bait that i own is it this is actually the original so many teeth marks and i mean this thing has been through heck it's been through some hook sets where i bash this thing up against the side of the boat he's missing both side fins and he still produces man and these things are just so good. You've got to get some of these little bluegill baits if there's bluegill in your area. Now this larger size, I got to tell you, I don't care for it as much. The action on the one and a half ounce juniors seem a lot better than on this two and a half ounce regular sized one and I don't know why, but it, this one does not seem to swim as well. It seemed to go sideways on me or just, it was, a, it was an awkward swim and so I don't know, maybe it was just my experience, I hope it is, but the juniors have just produced so well and caught huge fish. That's why I talk about those so highly. Next, we have got a little Gancraft. This is the S-Song 115 that Jared had given Devin and I. Just like a perfect little swim bait for the small ponds that we fish. And I haven't thrown it that much. She's been taking this thing and tossing it out because she really likes it. We actually got a new tail for him, so he's all spick and span. The previous one she had uh, bashed up against the dock, I think. Anyways, this little guy right here, I want to throw this in uh, some of the lakes and see if I can't catch a hog on the S-Song. Here was my first glide bait, guys. This is the Storm Arashi glide, and uh, this thing, has been, I think I caught, I caught a handful of fish on the first time ever taking this out actually. The video is pretty sick and it's in this crazy color uh, that just looks like almost nothing and it's so funny because it was getting those catches. So yeah, springtime, I've absolutely busted this out. Fall's coming and I'm gonna be throwing these glides out a lot more. Here is another Glidesdale. You guys saw Goldilocks at the very beginning. This is the same one by 13 Fishing 
but this color I would say is definitely gonna get more hits. I've actually caught a fish on this one off of the kayak. It was one of the recent videos, guys. It's got a fantastic action. Really like this guy, slow sink, and uh, yeah, got a little rattle in here. The thing is extra dope. Next up, guys, we've got a Depths. This is a diver, and uh, I forget the specific name of this one. It's one of the junior sizes. This is another bait that Jared had given us. If you guys haven't checked him out, I'll link him in the description. He gave us a, a big handful of awesome swim baits to kind of start off our collection when we got into this stuff, throwing some more of these bigger baits. So anyways, this pink one, we've caught some fish on this. This thing dives pretty deep and will actually deflect off of some cover, but we haven't wanted to risk it since it is fairly pricey. So we've only been fishing it mainly in open water along some grass edges. Sick little bait. Here is uh, possibly the largest bluegill bait we have. I need to give this bluegill bait some time. And I think as this uh, weather's cooling down and we're getting into that fall bite where these big fish want to come out and play and have themselves a big meal, this might just be the ticket, y'all. So I'm gonna throw this one out. It's almost got like a brush tail, some extra large treble hooks, and I don't even know the make or model of this guy right here, but it looks like it's gonna get munched, absolutely. So I'm gonna toss this out sometime soon. Last but not least in the hard bait box, you guys, is the Mega Bass Garuda. This thing is oversized and it is the PB catching machine. Unfortunately, the bass that I caught on this was like two and a half pounds. He was just very ambitious. I definitely am gonna get this out sometime soon. The thing is so sick. It floats and uh, it dives a mm, few feet, but what you can do, there's a little slot right here. You can add a teardrop weight and you can actually get this guy to dive all the way down to the bottom and really work the bottom. This thing is absolutely gonna get me one of the biggest bass I've ever caught very soon. I need to be throwing this more often on the big water. That does it for the big bait box, guys. I'm gonna put these back in here, show you the rest. If you guys are getting any value, please share this with a friend and don't forget to drop a thumbs up. Let's see what else we got. Whew. I just realized there's a lot of baits in this room. It's gonna take a second to get through all this, guys, but we're about to talk about one of my favorites lately, especially, which is these soft plastic swim baits, the big stuff, guys. They've been catching some monsters lately and I would love to tell you more about what we have here. So let's go ahead and get into these and then we're gonna cover the rest of our money bags full of plastics, right? So, the latest to the fleet, I think. 316 Lures, Rising Suns. These are the five inch lavender color. These things are pretty dope. We also got, I, I don't think this was lavender. I think this was like a blue shad or something like that. We got two different colors. They look almost identical. And uh, we've been rigging these up with, I was told to do an eight aught owner beast hook. We were rigging them with six aught owner beast hooks and we caught some fish on these, plenty actually by now, but we apparently missed a handful because we didn't use the right size hook. So eight aught beast hooks are recommended for these guys right here. I really enjoyed throwing them with the flashy swimmers, which I'll show you on some other baits here. We've got some varying colors. Here is this uh, red shad. I forget the name of this color. You work this thing real low down in the water column. I like to work it just above the grass. So I mean, that's common in our area is the grass. So and I've been working this just above the grass or even right down on the bottom and I've been creeping it, getting some fantastic results. So there's two colors. We also have this color, it's called drag queen. And you can see the difference here. Yeah, so that drag queen pink color, Devin has thrown this and caught some fish now. I believe it was her first catch on this very recently and uh, that was pretty epic. So the 316 Rising Suns, we have been throwing them quite a bit lately. Now some of these I don't even know if I should showcase just because I haven't caught any fish on them yet, but I, I will just give you a glimpse of some of the soft plastic swim baits that we haven't caught fish on yet. So we've got a handful of stuff to work with here that we have not caught fish on yet, but we are going to. And so until I do, I'm not going to showcase them. That way we can really break them out with some catches on the first episode. We also have a, a little dark sleeper. This is the smallest in this box here. We've got, we've been throwing these a lot lately. I really enjoy these. If you just want a small soft plastic swim bait to get a lot of bites. You guys, I believe really like this lure as well based on the views the video got. So the dark sleepers are fantastic baits. If you're just trying to represent any small little fish that those bass are eating in the ponds and the lakes, man, they've got a weighted hook up here in the nose and it actually is hidden underneath the top fin. So that hook right there is gonna do all the damage and yet it's hidden so they don't really see that hook as they're creeping up behind it and it allows you to work through some grass, maybe just a little bit better, work through some structure just a little bit better. But it's got a fantastic kick so you can absolutely just steadily reel this and uh, get bites on the move. That is a lot of what we got the first time we used it but on our most recent outings, the way we have worked these is almost like a Texas rig. We just let it drop down to the bottom and we kind of pop them pop them and it looks like a dying fish just waiting to get eaten by a big old bass. Speaking of, this is more of a bass pattern right here. And this color uh, specifically is my favorite. What is the name of this one? I I'm just gonna pronounce it Shirao. 
The color is called Shirao. It just looks like a minnow. It's it's extra sick. It's got a little chartreuse line in there, but it is uh, bad to the bone. This is a 3.8 inch, three quarter ounce. Three quarter ounce is my favorite size in the Dark Sleeper. I've just been throwing it a lot lately and I have a ton of confidence in it and I believe it's something very easy if you wanna just get into some soft plastic swim baits because it literally has the line tie right there on the nose. So you just rig this thing up, you're good to go. You don't worry about what size weight you need, what size hook you need. It's got everything for you. The hook is pretty much exposed so you're gonna have a good hookup ratio. It's just tucked in behind that little fin. This thing is fantastic if you've just got one bait to work all day as well because the thing is you can work this moving, you can work it on the bottom and you're gonna see great results either way. Next, let's get back into some bigger stuff. Here is some seven inch Mission Fish Swim Baits by 316. These, these right here are sick baits. When you get a bite on this, it's a lot of fun. It's just like a jig or Texas rig hit. Here's how you fish these or how we've been fishing them, I should say. You let these things fall straight down to the bottom, just like your jig. It's got a big weight right here in the nose. It's flush mounted and it helps it stand up. You can see it's got that angle. So this thing is gonna drop right down to the bottom with that kick and tail, and a bass is just going to absolutely smoke it. It comes with the hook. The hook is inside the body, and what you do is you actually feed your line through the nose weight here, there's a hole. Then you tie your knot to your hook, and then you put that hook back in the body. Then you can expose that hook, or you can even have it penetrating the top. You can do whatever you want. You can have that hook exposed out of the top, depending on how much structure you're working through. If you want it to be exposed, which is how we've been working it, where it's just kind of the point is in the body of the plastic. That way, you uh, won't get hung up very much. This thing is the ultimate weedless swim bait. It works so good for getting down into some thick stuff and you'll catch some absolute giant bass on this seven inch profile large swim bait. So the advantage of a line through bait is simply that what happens is oftentimes when the bass hits this and you set that hook, the hook separates itself from the plastic and this plastic ends up up your line a little bit and so when the bass thrash, they don't have that extra weight of the bait helping them free themselves from the hook. So that's, that's pretty cool. Line through weedless swim baits. We've just got some varying colors and we've already caught some good fish on the 316 Mission Fish. And that covers what is in this soft plastic bait box, but it's time to get excited for some of the most limited edition baits we have, some of the hardest to acquire, and some of our favorites as of late. Let's break out the working class zero baits. Before we talk about the baits, guys, mend it. Soft plastic glue. This is specifically for your swim baits. You guys have been all about this stuff. I've been recommending this a lot lately and y'all have purchased more of this stuff than almost anything else I've ever recommended on the channel. I know you guys are absolutely fixing your baits and getting the most out of them with this guy right here. See what happens with a lot of these soft plastic swim baits. You start rigging them up with those big owner style beast hooks and they've got that twist lock in the nose. Well, after you set the hook or get a few bites, that nose gets torn up. The top of the body gets torn up. You've got other pieces that might just split in half on these big swim baits. They're getting torn up by these bass. Those fish come in for the kill, they twist it all up and you're gonna have some thrashed baits very quickly. So I'm gonna put this stuff in the very top of the description, guys. You absolutely have to grab some of this. It's cheap, it's affordable. It's gonna save you money in the long run. It helps you save your baits while you're still out on the water when otherwise you'd have to retire it for the day because it gets too torn up. Let's say you start getting a bunch of hits or you're catching a bunch of fish. It is your favorite bait of the day and then the nose gets torn up and blown out just from a fish biting it and pulling it off that twist lock. Well, here's what you do. You just toss a little bit of this mend it right up there on the nose. It's gonna seal that thing tight in minutes thing is good to go. Literally, you can twist that hook back in there. Save your plastics, man, with some mend it. I'll put it in the description. A good example is one of the swim baits in here. I actually had the entire tail get sliced because of some fishing line and I put the tail back on there and the action was still good as ever. And that was on one of my $60 swim baits. So the mend it absolutely is a bargain. First off is a Battle Shad 7.5, man. Look at this beauty of a swim bait. This is the goblin color. I don't know if this one's, if this one's been thrown, it's only been thrown once or twice. We have it rigged up with a 10 knot owner beast hook. We have bent that hook up slightly with some pliers. That way you get a little bit better hookup ratio, yet it's still very weedless. And we just creep this thing down on the bottom, slow reeling with the tranks and the heavy swim bait rod and anticipate those big bites on the Battle Shad 7.5. Here's one rigged another way. This has been my favorite lately. The hitch color, a little bit lighter. Whoo, looks decadent, man. The fish love it too, but here's the difference. We put it on an owner flashy swimmer hook, 10 aught, and this thing has just been so good for creeping it down low with a little extra flash as it swims along the bottom. This has now become probably my favorite way to rig some of my larger soft plastic swim baits. I've been really liking the flashy swimmer, and I feel like it does draw in some more fish. I don't know why, but I think as they're tailing it, and they're deciding whether they want to commit and they see that flash, I think it makes a little bit of a difference. At least it's all in my head. And when you've got the confidence, you definitely get more bites. So I think the flashy swimmers are a great way to go on the larger swim baits. 
Battle Shad 7.5 and the Hitch Color, guys. Now these baits are very hard to acquire. Mike, the guy who makes these, along with a lot of other larger swim baits, just are offered in limited runs. A lot of these swim bait guys are making them custom and in a limited availability, so you absolutely have got to sign up for the newsletter on Working Class Zero if you want to be able to purchase any of these baits that are inside of this bag in the future, because they go in minutes. As soon as they go on sale, they're gone. You gotta be in the cart, lickety split. Next, guys, the Citizens. This is the six inch Citizen. This is the bait that got us started with Working Class Zero. These these guys are amazing. I think it's like 30 bucks for a two pack. So they're about, you know, 15 bucks a piece. They're absolutely killer. They just get bit. A six inch soft plastic swim bait. Whoo, there it is. We've only got one more in white that's untouched and unrigged, man. So pumped. This color has been doing so well for us. You can see this guy. We like them when they get torn up. When they lose an eye, they got that character, they got those bite marks. Ooh, this is when they really perform, man. Six Ot Owner Beast Hook and the Citizens. And these things creep through the grass better than almost any larger soft plastic swim bait we've ever used. I mean, you feel a little resistance and you just cut right through the grass. And oftentimes right when you pop through that grass is when you'll get those bites. These things are absolutely insane. And the bites you get are so much different on these swim baits right here. These larger swim baits, a lot of times all you feel is the bass lips close on the line. So you only feel a little, you only feel a little tick. And the reason is because they just inhale the whole swim bait. They're following it oftentimes, and they just oh, engulf the entire thing and keep swimming. And you barely even know, but you feel that tick, and then you crank down, make sure you feel the weight, set the hook. Devin and I have absolutely been loving throwing the big swim baits lately. Here is a larger Citizen. These are Citizen 7s. I, I don't know why, but I've just really been liking the 6. They get so many bites. We've thrown the 7 a lot. We haven't gotten uh, too many hits on the 7, but we had to absolutely get some. For me, I really like throwing the 6 inch profile, and when I'm feeling the big bites, I've been throwing the Battle Shad 7.5s. One thing that's super unique about the Citizens as well as the Battle Shads is they've got an air chamber. He calls it the Chaos Air Chamber, if I'm not mistaken. And so inside of this is just all an air pocket, right? So you rig these hooks up, and when those bass go in to bite it, instead of having to crunch down all that plastic, there's literally just air, and so they're gonna be able to scrunch that down and get right to that hook, and you guys are gonna miss less fish throwing these baits right here. And again, our standard retrieve for all these baits in the bag has simply been to cast out, let it sink, give it a little time. Once you feel it hit the bottom, just start creeping it. We got a couple more baits, y'all. We've got another goblin. We've got more working class zero baits in here, but a lot of them are duplicates. The only ones that we have not displayed yet this is a uh, emerald speckle, almost represents a crappie, and the Citizen 6, awesome color. Is this the original? Yeah, this is the one, man. This is Frankenstein. This is the silver. This is the original bait, man. Jared gave this one to Devin and I. This caught Devin's PB, which is larger than my PB. I think hers is like 6.75 or 6.80 uh, on this Citizen 6 at Lake Fork, man. So these things absolutely will catch the giants. This thing has been through some stuff. I mean, you can see it has been mended countless amounts of times on the back and on the nose. It has been so torn up. It has no eyes left, just the way we like it, man. I mean, used and abused and ready to catch some more fish before we retire her. So this is the Frankenstein. We've also got a CPAR 9 in here that I need to break out and use. Uh, I haven't caught any fish on it yet, so I'm not gonna tell you too much about it. But lastly, we have a Battle Shad in white. This thing's sick. I almost wanna take this hook off though and put one of the flashy swimmers on it. Then I think I'm gonna really love throwing this guy right here. This is the white color. We've been having a lot of luck at one of our favorite lakes on the boat lately with white swim baits. And so I would really love to take this out there with that flashy swimmer, just a little extra flash and uh, catch a giant. That does it for the Working Class Zero bag. Next up, y'all, this month's mystery tackle box. I haven't even opened it yet, so I'm not sure exactly what we have in here. Ooh, hey. You guys can try your first mystery tackle box for as low as $10 with the link down in the description, man. Let's go ahead and cover what we got in this month's MTB. We've got a flat banger for some fall cranking. We also have a Weston branded what appears to be like a whopper plopper style bait. I have never seen one of these before. It's called the Hypno Twist. It's a top water lure. It's got like a tail that looks like it spins off the back, almost like some of those frogs you see. And it's got two treble hooks. Hmm, be looking out for a slam coming very soon. We've got a uh, natural colored jig here in the box. I like it. We've got some harmony hooks, making better tackle, making better anglers is what it says here. It almost looks like they've redesigned the stickers. It's a sticker pack. That's pretty cool. We need to be tossing more of these on the boat. We've been putting stickers in random places, but we got to put some on the, route, the hot tamale. And some black and blue, almost like, it says scam shads. Say what? 
it. See if I can't catch some on these babies, as well as some scent. This is different. Crawfish scent. No fish can resist. Liquid mayhem. So I can toss this on just about any soft plastic. Made with real crawfish, fish attractant. Might help us get some more bites on the days when they're not hitting, man. A little scent to bring them in. Okay. This month's MTB. We're getting to the point where we might have to burn through some of this. That way it's not an hour long video. So let's do just that. We got a lot of 10,000 fish products right here. You guys know them, you've seen us throw them. We've got some Sukoshi bugs, perfect for the Ned rigs. It's very elastic. These things are tough to tear up and absolutely a go-to when it comes to small mouth or large mouth. Whenever they're finicky, I'll throw these. Next, we've got the Yodo worms. This is almost like an Alabama cross type of color. These things right here are a little creature bait with a nice little, they call it tickle tail. Fantastic action. You can throw them Texas rigged and there's ribs on the top and the bottom and the sides of the body. So you can text pose your hook any way you want. Fish it flat or with any specific color as the top of the rig. All I know is every time I've taken them out, I've caught some fish and we've got multiple colors, almost like a, a lighter baby blue. And then we have some more natural, almost watermelon color Yodo worms. And we've got some darker watermelon red flakes. So we've got Yodo worms in a lot of different colors. Matter of fact, gosh dang, here's some more right here. We got a lot of Yodo worms. Some more Sukoshi bugs in a black and blue color. Just again, think that stained water when you wanna go with the Ned rig, but you need something to stand out a little bit more and there's not as much visibility, that black and blue. Next, we've got some exopods. These guys have been real good for some Texas rigs. I would almost call them my uh, finesse Texas rig because they're three and a half inches. So I'm putting them on a shorter hook, almost like a three aught hammer hook and maybe a lighter weight. And I'm working these things just like I would any other craw on the bottom, but just a smaller profile to get more hits. And this Alabama craw color has absolutely been getting smacked. You can see we've gone through almost the whole pack, just in almost, I think one outing. So really liking that craw bait. Next, we got some Zoom Salty Super Flukes. You guys know how we rig these. Weightless Texas rigged, caught my PB. The things are epic. Uh, this is just almost like a jerk bait that you can fish in water with a ton of grass where you wouldn't normally want those treble hooks. These flukes stay just subsurface. You can pop it right through grass, and I'm telling you what, the bass come right to the surface and smash it. You almost always see the hits and you set the hook. It's so much fun. Wear your polarized glasses, man, and you will have the time of your life throwing some flukes. These guys are actually pretty new. We only have thrown these uh, a couple times. River to Sea Rig Walkers. These things I like because again, you just tie them up and they're good to go. They've got the built-in weight, they've got a hook up front, and you can swim these guys and you will catch some fish. We've only taken them out a couple times, but I do like those baits, the River to Sea Rig Walkers. Exo Ribbons. Just another version of a curly tail worm. I really like how the hooks text pose in these though. You guys, if you watched the Lake Louisville video recently, you can see how that body ridges, makes it real easy for you to bury that hook in there. So you'll get snagged on things like branches and rocks a lot less than you did with uh, other worms in the past, just because you're able to bury the hook in there, but you won't miss those fish. So we've got some seven inch. I think we burned through all the 10 inch in that red shad color that we really liked uh, recently. So we gotta get some more of those, but we've got some black and blue and some watermelon red. Here is some game changer eel eliminators, guys. I actually really like these as chatterbait trailers. I found that even when the chatterbait is going down to the bottom, if I don't just chuck and reel and cast and wind right away, I found I've even gotten hit on the drop from these guys right here. They've just got a fantastic swirl with that rounded tail and you'll get hits as you're creeping it or on the drop. I really like these guys right here. These are the 3.5 inch size and we've got some natural colors and a little bit of a baby blue flash on the underside of these ones here. I feel like we've talked about color a lot, so you guys know by now I like to throw those natural greens in clear water and more of those blues and darker colors in the stained water to get them to stand out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say, we have got these money bags full of soft plastics that we don't necessarily have to go through, but we've got a huge bag of Kraken Craws and various different colors that you guys know we will use and what types of water, but I oftentimes throw the Kraken Craws straight up Texas rigged with a quarter ounce bullet weight on a four aught hammer hook, or I will go ahead and use them as jig trailers, sometimes taking a section off, and we even have some of the smaller size Kraken Craws on here for the finesse jigs. So we've got a bag full of Kraken Craws. Then we have got a bag full of Bandito Bugs, and trench hogs. Uh, natural is gonna be like my go-to color. We've also got black and blue to throw as jig trailers or just in some stained water. Basically my favorite creature bait on the market. But yeah, guys, you cannot go wrong with some bandito bugs. So much action on these things. You gotta get you some. Next to y'all is the Saucy Swimmer. I will actually open this one up to show you a couple different variations because I get pretty specific with these. The 3.3 inch, the smaller size and the natural colors, I really like throwing on the swim jigs. The 3.8 inch seems to be fantastic for things like the chatter baits, a little larger profile, and I really like those on the tail end of the chatter baits. And then the larger 4.8 inch size, 
that larger 4.8 inch size, I usually throw these just on a dedicated swim bait hook and throw them by themselves. It seems a little large for the chatter baits. If I'm fishing in an area with not too much structure, I might throw these with just a jig head and an exposed hook out the back. That way you get a better hookup ratio or I'll go more weedless with something like an owner beast hook or just a weighted belly hook and I can just twist that into the nose, plop it in there, text pose it and I can work these through the grass, the larger 4.8 inch size saucy swimmers. And we've just got varying colors to match up with the baits that we're throwing them on. So for instance, if I'm throwing the white swim jig, white chatter bait, I will put on that white color. You've made it this far guys, drop a like, five more boxes. Getting into the top water box, man. First things first, buzz baits. Uh, I think if you watch my first ever fishing vlog, all I did was throw a buzz bait in it. I might be wrong, but they were, <laughs> they were one of my early confidence baits. The thing is just clanking and clanking and clanking on top of the surface. You can add trailers like a fluke or a little swim bait or a crawl, anything you want really. Uh, but I frequently just fish them by themselves when I first got into it. Just depending on which maker model you have, you might need some extra weight from a soft plastic. I have fished some buzz baits, for example, where like the buzz bait ends up horizontal in the water and you don't want that. So if you add a little soft plastic trailer, that will help it stay a little bit lower. What I frequently did when I first got started was actually just install a trailer hook because what happens is a lot of times the bass are chasing this and they go for that bait, but they end up coming up a little short because you're working this pretty fast and they'll get that second hook, that trailer hook. So that is very common practice with something like a buzz bait. I typically have the black for uh, after dark and I got the white for almost every other application. Black is just more common for like the stained water or after dark, and then this guy and almost everything else. There's also that bluegill color. If you're feeling like getting real natural, we've got a bluegill colored one as well. So you could put a little saucy swimmer, something along those lines on the back, and you'll get those bass. Common practice with the buzz baits is right at sunrise or right at sunset or on those overcast days where maybe that top water bite is extended like before a storm or if it's just cloudy, you might get a couple extra hours of top water action. Break out that buzz bait, you'll get some big bites. Next guys, whopper ploppers. For a time, I believe this had caught my PB of like four and a half pounds. It was the biggest bass I had ever seen. Whopper ploppers just create so much disturbance, very similar to that buzz bait, but I would say you miss less fish. You miss less fish because it's got the treble hooks and that has just seemed to be my experience with them. Now the buzz baits, the bites on a buzz bait are just so much fun. The whopper plopper seems a little bit more lazy and effortless. Uh, it does float, the buzz bait sinks, so you gotta really like cast and reel the buzz bait as soon as it hits the surface. The key with the buzz bait is working it as slow as possible without allowing it to sink. With the whopper plopper, you can cast this right on the edge of some grass and you can just let it sit there. You can work it slow, you can work it fast, you can pop it, you can do a lot of varying retrieves with the whopper ploppers. My most common was just a steady and you get some massive blow ups guys. And don't be afraid if you get the crap scared out of you when one hits right by your feet at the bank and it's a big one. So whopper ploppers absolutely will get you some big old fish. And we have a couple variations. These are new ones that I don't even know if we've showcased. I guess because people like the whopper ploppers so much and they've done so well, they've come out with some new designs. So this guy here has like a lip on the front where water spits out and it's got that propeller on the tail. And so, yeah, I guess I need to fish this more and get some, uh, some catches on it because I haven't tried this one yet. Same goes with this one right here. I was like, now this is just insane. So this has got a propeller on the front and the rear. And yeah, I haven't uh, caught a fish on this yet, but stay tuned. Now this little guy, we've caught some fish on. This is just a smaller profile whopper plopper. I've caught some numbers on this one evening and that was about all she wrote. I haven't thrown this too much since. I just prefer, if I'm gonna throw a whopper plopper, I like to go big and try and get that big bite. So this is the 130, I believe. It's, it's, uh, it's not a small bait, but this one right here will absolutely get hits from not only the small fish and you'll connect with numbers, but also the big. So I really enjoy the 130 size. Here's a more natural color and this is definitely smaller. This is the 90 size. So this is almost in between this one, this is like 75 or 76 size, and this is the 90 size. So the 90's got a pretty good profile. I would definitely consider this in more uh, ponds, but I, I, again, I just like that 130, so leave it at that. There's the whopper ploppers. Frogs. Now, when we first got into frogs, I pretty much only threw like the, I think it's Booyah Pad Crasher. It's just cheap, affordable, found them at Walmart. So we've got a handful of them in here. We've got the popping ones, uh, some with legs cut down a little bit, and we've got like a small walking one. You know, a lot of people will downsize their frogs and uh, fish a smaller frog whenever, whenever they're not getting too many hits, maybe they'll fish a smaller frog. I don't know, I've just never really been too much of a fan of throwing the smaller frogs. Maybe it's because I don't have a dedicated setup. I mean, I'm always throwing the heavy braid. You want something with a little bit of weight. And these small ones, I just don't seem to really break out very often. Yeah, we've got some various frogs that we've acquired over time. This is like a Terminator clear one I bought just to almost do like a challenge video. We've got a yellow-bellied spro frog, walking frog. Bread and butter for me, 
the last, I don't know if it's been six months or just this summer, has been absolutely the Guggen Squad Filthy Frogs. You guys know we've been throwing these. We've got uh, just about every color you can imagine. We've got the Bullfrog. We've got, uh, this is a white belly, but it's like got some green on top with a little pattern. We've got just the standard black I'll throw if it's really stained. We've got uh, almost like a chartreuse-ish bellied one. And then we have like a gill pattern. Uh, what I've been getting the most hits on is the all white, which I have in this box over here and I'll showcase. But uh, yeah, those pointed nose frogs are the ones that you can buy by cranking your reel slowly and popping, you can get it to walk side to side. So what happens is you don't work it towards you as fast and you can get more opportunity in the strike zone. The popping frogs are for maybe slightly less thick of cover. And when you've got a little bit of open water on those grass edges, you'll hit that popping frog up because what it's gonna do is when you, when you pop this frog instead of walking him, you're gonna get some dispersion of the water and extra vibration on top of the surface that attracts those fish from further away oftentimes. So the popping frogs has led to some uh, big bites for me lately. You've been seeing me throw the popping frogs a lot in the uh, most recent kayak videos and catching a lot of fish on them. I can't say I like one more than the other. It's just kind of catered to the scene, you know? Like if it's very thick grass or there's just little small openings and pockets, I really like the walking frogs because you can stay in that strike zone longer. So it really comes down to what I'm fishing and when I will break out the popping versus the walking. Closing in y'all, let's talk about some crankbaits. We have got all shapes and sizes in here. We're just gonna give you a brief rundown and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what I like on my cranks. So for starters, crankbaits are floating and they have a bill on them. That way, whenever you start cranking, they dive down to a certain depth based on the bill and a couple other factors. Some will have rattles in them. Some are gonna be silent. Sometimes the bite's on with the rattle, sometimes it's on with the silent and you're just gonna have to figure out for yourself what works best in your waters. Same goes for colors. There's so many different options. Of course, there's gonna be better ones for stained water versus clear water. Now, you just wanna really target in whatever the bass are eating in your lakes. So if you see the bass feeding up on bluegill, find some bluegill patterns. Something like this guy right here would probably do pretty well. You've got fish eating shad, something like this color, just the color would do well. We've got some Grande Recons. These are the deep divers. We talked about those early on in the video from the tackle hall. I haven't thrown the uh, the yellows and the chartreuses too much, but uh, in stained water, I will break them out. This one's really cool. It's a bubonic bug square bill and uh, some awesome color patterns. If you guys haven't seen these, you can check those out on Carl's Bait and Tackle. The red representing more of a crawfish and uh, there's just some really unique designs with those bubonic bugs. This is like a purple and silver flash. I mean, some crazy looking designs. Those guys uh, dive down like four to six feet. When it comes to the shapes and sizes, y'all, there is so many different options. You go with a smaller profile if they're feeding on smaller bait fish in your area. These guys are a decent sized bill though, so they'll dive down to about six feet so you can get down on the bass level if it's not too shallow. That is when you'll throw something like these little mini recons. For me, I think I started out with just the shallow divers, like one to three or four feet. And all I can tell you is that a shallow diving shad color crankbait. So if you can find a crankbait and like a sexy shad, that has always been my top fish catch in color. I mean, I don't care if it's clear water or stained water. And if there's shad in those waters or not, something about the sexy shad color on, on the crankbaits has gotten me so many fish. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's lipless or if it's a square bill, but that sexy shad color, if I had one color all year round, that's exactly what it would be. The reds, if you've got a lot of crawfish in your area, also there's certain times of year when they say red is best, but I have not dove into the red too much. It's not been my confidence color, so I just have shied away. Chartreuse, if it's very chocolate milk and stained. You wanna fish these square bills over rock, guys. So rock is really the key. Rock and off of trees is where you really wanna try and deflect with these square bills. Now, yes, you will get snagged. Yes, you will lose some crankbaits. It might be a little easier off a kayak or a boat when you can go retrieve these things. But if you can fish these things over rock, you will absolutely get hit because what happens is that bill it's always digging into that rock and it's hitting that rock. The fish can hear this, they key in and they zoom over. And oftentimes you wanna be hitting that bottom. If there's little limbs and grass, you'll probably be getting a lot on the treble hooks, don't fish them there. But if there's big stumps that you can deflect off of or rock on the bottom, that is when you want to grab that square bill and you wanna crank and bang on all that rock and that will absolutely get you some big bass. Now the lipless, the lipless crankbaits are fantastic if maybe you don't wanna sink down or you wanna control the depth, you can kinda of work this to your advantage. Also if there's grass, you can work these and you can really rip through that grass. They seem to work better than those square bills for that. So something like the Guggen Squad Clutch is what I've caught most fish on when we're talking lipless crankbaits has been absolutely insane. Shotgun Shad has been like my go-to color. I've got one right here. This color tears them up, man. Shotgun Shad Lipless Crankbait. 
fill this if there's some grass or if you feel like you're getting too low with those square bills and you will catch some major fish. The thing just wiggles real nice. You can work it with a yo-yo technique, what I call you raise the rod tip and then you just reel the slack on the way down, raise the rod tip, reel the slack on the way down. What happens is that fish is scurrying and then he pauses, scurrying and then he pauses and that is how I've gotten so many bass. So we didn't go too crazy in depth with the square bills but just know shallow divers if you're fishing the ponds, Deep divers, if you're fishing the lakes and you know those fish are down 10 to 15 feet, you can really get on some major fish in the summer and into fall transition with the crankbaits. And so you guys need to be breaking these things out. Next, we just got a couple of mixed matched boxes and we are done. This right here, I think we just threw some random baits in, but some stuff we haven't shown you yet. The Mike Buka and Ketchco Baby Bull Shad. Whoo, this is an awesome hard body swim bait. If you guys want to get into some swim baits, but you want to start off small, get more hits, Mike Buka's Baby Bull Shad. This thing is so good. The action on it is just unmistakable. It's just got a crazy S weave pattern and it gets the hits. It's got those little treble hooks. You're not gonna miss many fish on these. And you'll get big ones and small ones. They'll come in from a ways to see what this thing is. I like to fish these in more clear water, work them kind of slow, and you will absolutely get destroyed on these right here. I say work them a little slow just because they're not super heavy, so they're not gonna sink extremely fast on you. So if you work them real fast, you're gonna be burning it along the top, which is fine too, and you will get blow ups. But I like to work them a little bit slower, and those fish will key in, they'll come over, and they're gonna absolutely destroy these little baby bull shells. Shads. Here's some more baby bull shads in a, a gizzard shad color and then also a trout color. Baby bull shads for days. The rest of the stuff is in here is really just terminal tackle that we'll save for another video if you guys want to see a lot on the hooks and line, etc. All right, y'all, one of the last boxes, we've got some jerk baits in here. These are awesome for clear water, guys. Jerk baits, you're gonna just cast those things out, pop, 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 give it a couple pops, let it get down to its diving depth, and a lot of these are suspending, so once you get them down to their diving depth, you pop those things a few times, they stay about three, four, five, six feet down below the surface, and the bass can't resist, man. They see this erratic movement, and then it just pauses, and you'll get those hits on the pause a lot of times with the jerk baits. Fantastic for clear water. Year round, you'll get bites on jerk baits. I mean, it's just a fishing staple. You gotta have some jerk baits in the arsenal, and probably a better way of storing them, too, because ours are all hooked together. I caught some on the jerkbait in a recent video. I think it was a mystery tackle box episode. We've got some of these, uh, I think they're like American, I think they're called the trash fish. Tactical bass and highly recommended this color, the speckled trout, I believe. And we haven't caught any fish on them yet, so I guess I just need to fish these more. They're absolutely supposed to be a devastating swim bait, but I haven't caught many fish on them yet, so. And we've thrown in a lot. I mean, we've, we've given these things a lot of time. So, all American trash fish or something like that. We've not had the best of luck with them. Next, we've got some spinner baits, guys. Now, these will lead to some big bites. This one uh, does not have a trailer. It's got a Colorado and a Willow Blade on here. Here's one with a trailer. This is a perfect example. This one's got actually a gold and silver blade and a little chartreuse on the skirt. This is great for stained water and those windy days. Spinner baits are often what you'll see guys throwing on those very windy days when there's a lot of chop. Maybe it's a little tougher for those fish to key in on the bait but they see these flashing blades and this is just a constant swim. It's just a consistent reel with these spinner baits. Work them a little under the surface or let them fall down a little lower and just start creeping these things. Uh, this is a half ounce, I got a 3 8 ounce. Uh, I, I prefer the heavier ones so I can work them a little bit faster, but it just depends on the depth in your pond that you're fishing or maybe the lake that you're fishing. I frequently fish these in more shallow water and I will definitely throw these when the wind starts to kick up and there's less visibility and these blades really bring it in. The bass thinks it's a school of fish and he goes in for the kill and gets that hook. Uh, oftentimes I pair it up with a saucy swimmer trailer, gets the job done. All right, we're closing it out with the last box, man. You guys have made it this far. Can you believe it. I don't even know how long this video is at this point. I wonder how long it's going to take me to edit it. Anyways, we've got a lot of duplicates in here because this is just a box I made specifically for bank and kayak fishing. So let me just show you what I haven't displayed yet. We've got some dark sleepers. This is a pink color dark sleeper. I've got uh, that same color that I said I liked. This one's gotten a lot of hits and abuse. So we've got some more dark sleepers. We've got chatterbaits, some more jerk baits, some more square bills. This is the frog that's probably caught me more fish than any other frog I've ever thrown. This is a, a white filthy frog, probably one of the first ones I bought from the Guggen Squad. And I, I don't even know how many fish I've caught on this guy. I cut the legs because it helps me walk that frog a little bit better. I find that I can't get that walk started as well when the legs are longer. And so I trim those down a ways and I get a lot more hits just because I'm able to keep it in the strike zone and walk it better right off the bat. Now we talked about popping frogs, but I didn't show you the Guggen Squad 
Squad ones because I had them in this box. So I've got two Guggen Squad popping frogs. One is the bullfrog color, one is that white color. I've had some amazing days on the white popping already pre-storm. It's been absolutely insane the amount of bites I get on the popping frog guys. So if you haven't picked any of these up, they're brand new. You got to get some on Carl's bait and tackle. That's really, we've talked about all this is just kind of stuff from the other tackle boxes that I put in here to have on me at one time when I'm fishing the bank. So really we've covered everything. Oh, here's something different. So this is actually the first popper I've really ever used, the Guggen Squad brand. It's, it's kind of got like silver flash on the sides and almost like a white belly with a little red lip. And so you almost work this like the popping frogs. You could walk these too, but I think the, the point for me is like creating a big disturbance on the top of the water. So I pop these pretty erratically. You'll cause a lot of disturbance and yet this one also sits. So it's, it's kind of different from like the whopper plopper or some of these other baits. If you're talking about this versus a frog or a whopper plopper or wondering why there's so many top water options, that whopper plopper is almost like a consistent motion. You really want the propeller tail going for you. The frog, you can work it in some of the thickest cover. This one, there's a little bit more open water. You throw that popper and now you're not only causing a lot of disturbance and really attracting those fish, but then it kind of sits there and they've got more time to strike it and it has treble hooks. So you've got a really high connection ratio. You'll miss a lot less fish than on a frog. So there's just various reasons why you'd want to throw other top waters uh, in different scenarios. But that really covers it, man. I think this is probably the longest video I've ever uploaded to YouTube and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please share it with a friend. Uh, I'll try and put some timestamps down in the description maybe to talk about certain baits at certain times if you wanted to see anything individually. And that is all the tackle we have thrown in all the videos as of late. I can't think of anything that we did not showcase, but I wanna thank you guys for sticking around till the end. We're working on making more fishing videos for you guys on the boat, on the kayaks, on the bank and just having a ton of fun while we're doing it. So let me go ahead, get this thing edited and up for you guys and we'll see you on the next episode, y'all. Peace out. <gasps>